what is going on everybody welcome back today we are doing an upgrade on the jeep i started to do this video the other week but then i got cut up with some stuff so so you see some clips that look like they jump back and forth that is why but anyways we're gonna get right into it today gonna be installing tmr customs dry flange slash slug kit into the front end mainly because if you watched my last video you would have seen that my jeep did this i'm setting goals like packing i'm setting stacking i see myself being happy a better me <clears throat> now in that situation i got into the right pocket and i had just the right amount of torque and granted it was a cheap amazon hub i probably spent 35 bucks on it so it breaking wasn't too bad luckily i was able to find one at the local auto parts store to replace it for the weekend and keep on wheeling but i knew that it was going to need to be upgraded so we're going to get right on into this start the install and show you everything that comes with it so now granted, I already did unbox this in the last video, but because of things, I wanted to just kind of go over it again. The first thing you're gonna pull out are the actual flange covers and they are machined and they look absolutely beautiful. The next thing you'll pull out are these plastic pucks, which sit right on the inside of the flange. Then you also get an O-ring, which goes around this outer edge. You're gonna have two flanges, two pucks, two O-rings. And then the next thing you'll get are your actual slugs. Now, I have already pre-greased mine. Like I said, I got in the middle of an install and then had to stop. So I already pulled these out. I already got them greased. I was going to get ready to put them in, and then I didn't get to. And again, you will have two of these. The next thing you have in your box is all of your screws to screw the flange onto the hub. So We're going to get into this side, show you what it's not supposed to look like and then go from there so for starters there should be a lot more on the back of this and there should be gears that you would pull out but i grenaded it i'm going to skip over that clip from the last partial install and show you what is all different this is what happens when you grenade a factory hub. Now, the way that everything works is your hub here has a spring on the backside, and when you rotate it, it pushes a spring in, which then pushes this gear onto this gear. This gear sits around your axle shaft, and this gear sits in the main section of your hub now when it pushes down it connects the two gears together and that's what causes your axle shaft to start rotating which then connects it to the tire and everything that way you're actually in four-wheel drive now as you can tell you can see how thin and cheap these gears are and then you put them side by side of the new drive flange slugs whatever you want to call them and it is a lot beefier so you can do this with your wheel on or with it off it is definitely easier to have it off because you have a lot more room in here to work with but the one thing you want to make sure is that you get your axle jacked up that way this can move freely because you've got to make sure you line up the splines from your axle shaft and the hub that way the slug slides in all the way so that's we're going the first thing we're going to do is we're going to slide these slugs in. Now like I said, I pre-greased them. You're going to want to make sure you grease them that way they slide in and out easily when you do need to take them out in the future. But first thing you're going to do, find the hub splines, get it to slide in partially, add a little pressure, not there. Rotate it just a little bit. There you go. Find it, make sure you push it in all the way and now it is all the way in there. The next piece of the puzzle is to take your actual flange cover and simple as before, line up your bolt holes with the holes in the hub, slide it into place. Now the next thing, install all of your screws. Now, 
now that you have all of your bolts in, time to put the wheel back on and then move over to the other side. So starting off this side, same thing as the other, take out the three bolts and then you pull out the locking hub. Now this is what you should actually see on the inside of your locking hub. And as you can tell, the gears are definitely a lot tinier and thinner than the drive slugs. So again, same thing as the other side. I'm gonna take the drive slug, feed it in, find the hub gears, push it, rotate it just a little bit so you find those axle spawning gears. And then push it in all the way. And again, next, go and take your drive flange, line it up with the holes in the hub, and slide it right into place. And again, last but not least, you're going to install your bolts into your flange. Now to throw our wheel on and then we'll be all done. So as you guys can tell, that is gonna wrap it up for this install. It is a super easy install, but also a very effective install because those slugs are going to hold up a lot longer than factory locking hubs. Now, granted, you can get uh, aftermarket locking hubs like Warren. They're super heavy duty. I haven't seen anyone have problems with them. But for me, I'd rather have the slugs just because I know that it's one solid piece. It's going to hold up to some serious abuse and it takes 20 minutes. Pop out, pop off this flange, throw in the slug, put it back in or vice versa. If you're going to know you're going to drive around for a couple weeks, but it also isn't going to hurt it too much to drive around with them in. I know plenty of people who have, but I'd rather not wear out extra parts if I don't need to. So that is going to be it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.